Viserys Targaryen here, and I just wanted you to know, Christmas is coming. All right, hello YouTube, welcome back to the Grease Comedy YouTube channel. Today's video, we're gonna be talking about the Revenge Red Wedding. So we've already kind of talked about Rob being brought back, and we've also talked about uh, a lot of the issues with the Riverlands at this time, but we haven't really talked about the Revenge Red Wedding in its fullest. So we're gonna try to go through in this video a lot of the main theories about how it could happen, what are the motivations, what we could possibly see here. And so this is gonna be a culmination of a lot of different topics that we've talked about and just mashing it into one. So right off the bat, I think the important thing to understand with this theory is how is it going to happen, right? And we kind of have to look to a lot of our evidence in Feast for Crows. I think there's way more evidence given than we have Jamie, Jamie and Brand's plot lines in the Riverlands. That's where a lot of our information is going to come from. So I'm kind of glad I got done with this like a week or two ago of that book. So that's refreshed in my mind. But there's a lot of moving parts going on. So let's kind of just review the events of Feast for Crows with Jamie and Brienne's storyline before we move too far into it. So again, the last we see of Jamie and Brienne that is notable is River Run has been taken. Edmure has given it up, but at the same time, he has let the Blackfish escape. Jamie, on the other side of that, has allowed this garrison at River Run to go free. Now he has taken their weapons, but that doesn't seem to matter too much. As even his aunt says, none of those men are probably going to keep that oath. And so that's probably the truth. So that's part of the theory is that there's this large force of men plus the Blackfish out on the loose. They probably are going to unite with the Brotherhood Without Banners to try and help take back River Run. And so that's part of it, right? There's a lot of moving parts here. So that's part. Again, in Jamie's last chapter, River Run, or in Jamie's couple chapters uh, at River Run, we come into this character named Tom Seven Streams. And if you've been paying attention, you know this is... If you've been paying attention, you actually know this is a character we met already with Arya, where he was part of the Brotherhood Without Banners. So now you also have an informant, a spy that is going to be within River Run, where a possible Frey Lannister wedding could be taking place. So that's important as well because he's worked his way into kind of that inner circle. But let's also not forget that he was already within the Frey camp. And even one of the Freys that the uh, Brotherhood Without Banners end up capturing and killing probably got that information because of Tom. And so we find out that's confirmed with Brienne because she has Rob's crown and that was given or taken from the fray they killed. So a lot of evidence here to suggest that the Brotherhood with that the Brotherhood without banners has a lot of information into the inner workings of the phrase. So that's another aspect of it, right? We haven't really gotten into the Brienne or the Lady Stoneheart stuff yet. We're kind of been hinting at it because we want to build up to that. So the next idea we have is that there's going to be a wedding. We know that Devin Lannister is going to end up marrying one of the Freys. We don't know who yet. There's a long list of possible candidates. We know that Tywin had ended up doing this to appease Walder Frey. So that's going to be part of that whole contract. The other contract was, again, Lancel was to marry a Frey. That did not end up going out, going out that well. So Davin has quite a lot of pressure on him to actually keep this marriage pact to the Freys. And so that's very important. Now, given where is this going to happen, it makes the most amount of sense to happen at River Run. I've kind of gone back and forth in this in the previous attempts of trying to dissect this theory in the past, but I do think it makes sense for it to be River Run, um, given that all of the characters involved in this wedding are going to be there. Davin being the Warden of the West, it doesn't make sense for him to go all the way back, so he would probably just stay at River Run um, again. Jenna or Jenna Lannister is here as well. So that kind of makes sense. And so all of this is kind of leading to this wedding to again, hold up that contract. And then Davin, Davin would eventually go back to the West. So the real question is who is going to be at this wedding? And I think it makes sense for a lot of the main phrase to be here. Black Walder, I think is going to come. You also have something else that's very important to understand is that Jamie has just basically instructed the phrase to bring back all of the prisoners, all the captives they have at the at crossing. So again, it would make sense for those to be brought south as well. Again, notably, you have the Malisters in there as well. Uh, the great John Umber is going to be there as well. So I think a lot of these prisoners brought south, I think makes sense to River Run to give back to the crown and then to also be ransomed. And so that's an important part of it. Now, the really important part of it is what does Walder Frey do? Like, does Walder Frey come to this wedding? What happens? 
And I would tend to believe that Walder is going to come to this wedding. It's a very important wedding given, like, Damon's has a very high position of Warden of the West. This is a very important relationship to cement the Lannisters and Freys. And yes, Walder Frey is old, but we have gotten evidence that he has traveled recently. We see that in a Catelyn POV and how they note that he travels in a very closed litter. So we know he has traveled. I don't think that's outrageous. And also, when we look at Walder Frey, he's someone that is very prickly when it comes to weddings, as we all know. And he's someone that puts a lot of importance on them. For instance, uh, when we look at all of his own weddings, he is very upset that the Tullys or Hoster specifically does not come to uh, his wedding. Also, when we think about. Walder trying to get Edmure to marry one of his daughters. Again, he was not happy that that got rejected as well. And even then, the Rob stuff as well. So I would tend to believe that Walder will come to this wedding if it's at River Run. And it makes the most sense to be at River Run, just given, I think, all the setup. So I think that's a really big part of this. So now we kind of have established why it'd be in River Run. Who's all going? Again, I think a lot of the main phrase are going to be here. I think pretty much all of them that we know of, it makes sense. This is a very important wedding, right? It's not like a, like, it wasn't like Lancel and his Frey girl. It, it, that one was not nearly as important as this one is specifically, just given how much importance is on Davin at this time. And so, again, that's going to bring all the phrase. Now, the other part of this is the Brotherhood Without Banners. What are they up to at this point? We know they've been killing a lot of phrase uh, at this point, and we've had very notable phrase die at this time. And so we know that they're trying to get vengeance, right? There's the famous line that we use in a lot of these series, or a lot of these theories with Stoneheart, how she either wants her son brought back or the people that were involved all dead. And so we've kind of made a video already on Rob's return. Well, this video is going to handle not much as not much on that, but what she possibly could be doing there. But the big part of that is she wants revenge on the the phrase and the Lannisters and specifically Jamie Lannister. So, OK, she wants to do that. Now you have another force coming in. So you have another group of, of soldiers with the Blackfish and his men. That's all going to be great. You now also are going to probably have Jamie becoming a captive because of Brienne. So what Jamie can do is give you information. He can tell you whatever you need to know, because, again, they're going to be holding Brienne probably as a hostage, right? They're going to be basically going, you tell us this stuff or we kill Brienne. And again, we know that's going to work. Jamie has very hard feelings for Brienne. We know that based off his own POVs and Brienne has that reciprocate reciprocated. So that's what's going to end up happening, right? I don't think... So I've gone back and forth on this as well, so you guys are going to have to let me know what you guys think here, is that if Jamie was to be going to be used in this Revenge Red Wedding, how would you do it outside of just giving them information on how many men is in the castle, You know, who's in charge, what are the personalities of people, who can they trick, who are the important people uh, to kill? All that's going to be relevant, but... Actually using Jamie, I thought when I first got into this theory, I thought Jamie was the key to it, right? Jamie, they're going to use him to trick uh, people to get extra men in there to then open the gates or to get more, sneak more of their men in. But the problem with that idea becomes, okay, does Jamie betray his family? Because he likes his aunt and he likes David. They're both going to be here. If he betrays them, they're going to die. And so he, it would be an interesting arc for George if it was like, Okay, Jamie has to choose between his family and Brienne. Now that would be interesting. Like, like how would he choose between those two? But I don't think that would allow a red wedding to happen because I think he would choose family. Um, and I think he had the first sign he would throw them off, right? So I don't think that's gonna happen. I think having Tom there is enough already to sneak in people. Um, and I think one of the leading theories is the same way that the Blackfish got out is how Tom is going to get more of their men in as well. So that could be a possibility um, as well. The other possibilities is just, just plain and simply, they dress up as Lannisters or Frey men, right? They've been already hunting and killing all these men. They could easily dress up as them and sneak in. And then you have the same, and then you have the same thing as Red Wedding, right? Get all these people drunk, get them all unaware, and you slowly sneak your men in, right? You kill the guards, you kill people that would alert uh, anyone of any in in incoming danger, and then bam, right? You have this revenge red wedding. And I think this revenge red wedding, I talked about this with Ricky from the voice of old town. He's really influenced um, some of my opinions on, on a lot of things that, that I didn't really even think about. But what I find very interesting about this revenge red wedding is I think it's going to be almost as brutal, if not more than the first red wedding. But the difference here is going to be 
we're going to be seeing this kind of from almost our good side POV, right? We don't like the phrase. We don't like the Lannisters, or at least some of them. But in reality, the Lannisters that are here are ones we actually kind of like. Like, Jenna Lannister is, is one of my favorite Lannisters. Um, Devin, Davin Lannister, or Devin Lannister, I don't know how to say his name. I hope I haven't been saying that right all uh, video. You guys can tell me down in the uh, comments if I've been saying it wrong. I, you know, I, I like knowing how to pronounce names. I'm just not very good at it. But we like him. He's pretty cool as well. But all these people are going to die. If that is going to happen, these characters will die. And so it's going to be us really looking at like, okay, these people didn't really have anything to do with the Red Wedding. These are innocent people for the most part. And we're seeing them being slaughtered. And that's what's going to be really great is because we're going to have sympathy for the Freys, I think. Especially the ones we, we kind of like, like Perwin Frey, right? He seems like a really respectable guy. We're going to see all these people. Like, there's not going to be any discrimination. These people are going to die. I mean, think about the extremes that Stoneheart takes with Brienne. Now, I will say in the Brienne situation, I, I definitely see their side, right? Like, Brienne comes back really armored well with a Valyrian sword that is from the Lannisters. It has a lot of Lannister ornaments on it. What conclusion would you make out of that, right? And then you also compound that with, okay, Brienne was supposed to bring Sansa and Arya back, and she hasn't done either of those. And especially if you're Stoneheart, where you know right, that Arya was alive, right, like, very recently, because she was with the Hound, and they figured that information out, but then you also knew that Sansa was still alive at the Purple Wedding, so you're sitting here, and you're Stoneheart, you're going, okay, you, you failed me, right, both of my daughters were alive, and you had opportunities to save them very recently, and you didn't, so that's the way I think Stoneheart is going to look at that situation, now, the other part of this is going to be Stoneheart herself, I think if Rob's body is here, and I, I think it makes a lot of sense to be here, just given as Walder's going to use this pretty much as a trophy, right? If there is a body left even there, I think Stoneheart is going to uh, try and give it the kiss of life. I don't think it's going to... I either, one, don't think it's going to work, or two, I think she's going to be killed before she can, where I think Arya is going to be a character that's going to be on this very vengeful arc, kind of how she was in the show, but she's going to see here what vengeance, blind anger, and revenge does to a person. She's going to see it through her mother. And I think all this adds up with Arya's plotline, because I think within the first third of the book, she's going to be leaving to go to Westeros. And I don't think this revenge red wedding is going to happen right away. I think there's going to be a plotting, it's going to be build up to it, happen maybe around the middle of the book. So I think these two plotlines are going to come together fairly quickly. And so I think Arya, seeing what's going on, right, goes to this revenge red wedding as well, and she interacts with her mother. And her mother is this zombie, just not her mother anymore, trying to bring back her dead brother who isn't her brother anymore. And I think Arya, seeing what all of this has done to her and seeing the innocent people slaughtered here as well, whether that's serving people, whether that's just stable boys being slaughtered for no reason, I think this is the point that changes Arya's character. And I've been a big proponent for Arya because I think, you know, after the kind of the last two books have just not really been big Arya books. They've been developing books for Arya. This is the moment where we kind of have this culmination of her whole story, right? Ever since Ned died, right? She's had this list. She's had this revenge. She's wanted this violence for the most part. That's why she's becoming a faceless man to be able to assassinate the people she doesn't like. And to come back and realize, maybe that's not the right path. Well, also then, if she comes over because there is some sort of contract that the faceless men allow her to leave, that might directly conflict that. And how does that work, so, well, work itself out? So I, I really think the Revenge Red Wedding is something that is going to take us back to this idea that George does not glorify violence and death. Kind of what we saw a little bit in House of the Dragon uh, in episode 9, which I wasn't a fan of. And taking us back and really having a hard moment for Stoneheart and Arya together, I think would be a great moment. But let me know what you guys think about all of this. I hope you guys all enjoyed, and I'll see you guys all in the next one. Bye, guys.